Hi everyone, Anjitha this side. Welcome back to AV Automation Hub. In the previous video, we started with the K6 series in which we saw how we can install K6 and how we can execute our first test script. Today, we are going to focus on stress testing. So let's understand what is stress testing. It is basically done to check the performance of your application under extreme load. Just like the average load test, the stress test also starts at zero and increases beyond the point tested in the average load type. For example, you start with zero virtual users, then you ramp up to 200 virtual users. But in the average load time, maybe you will stay there for, for some duration, like let's say 10 minutes. But in case of stress test, you will stay for longer time. And also the ramp up and ramp down periods are also longer as compared to the average load test because it allows you to give a more realistic approach. But it's always recommended to do the stress test only after the smoke and average load test because, for example, with stress test, you are checking with 200 virtual users for 40 minutes, but your APIs are anyways not working. It doesn't make any sense to spend that much time if you haven't done your smoke test or average load test. So it's always recommended to follow this sequence whenever you perform stress testing. It should be smoke test, average load test, and then your stress testing should be done. In the mind map, I have added some points, some notes for you. So in the water stress test, which I just explained to you, it is used to check the stability of your application under extreme load, where you gradually increase the load until you reach a point where the system starts to show some sign of stress or potential issues. Next one is when to perform stress testing, product launch. Before launching any new product or making any significant change to an existing product, you can conduct stress testing to ensure your system can handle the anticipated increase in the user activity. The next one is holiday sale event, for example, like Black Friday. So if your application experiences some seasonal peak in the user traffic during this holiday sale event, for example, Black Friday, then you can conduct stress testing to ensure your system can handle the increased load without any potential issues. The other use case is financial transactions. This is also very important. In case of financial transactions, you can conduct stress testing to ensure your system can handle a high volume of transactions without any performance issues. So these are some of the use cases for stress testing, but it again depends on project to project. The last tip, which I have already explained, you should execute stress testing only after completing the smoke and average load test, because let's say the smoke test might take some milliseconds because you're hitting an API and checking the response. If it is 200, okay you know the API is fine, your build is fine. But if you're directly going with the stress testing, that will waste a lot of time. I have taken this sample image from the official website of Grafana Basic. So this is a virtual user or throughput chart of a stress test, which looks something like this, in which you can see the, the stress test starts at zero virtual users, then it increases to 200 virtual users within this 10 minutes, and then it stays there for some time, and then ramp down again to zero virtual users. Fine, so this is a visual representation of stress test. Now let's write the code for this, how we can handle this in K6. Let's go to Visual Studio Code and start writing the code. So this is the test case which we created last time in the previous video. If you have not watched, I would suggest you to understand the basics of K6 first. What does this HTTP mean from where we are importing this one, how to install K6. So now let's create a test case for stress test. So what I will do, I'll create a new file and I will name it as stress test.js and I will just copy the same code. We are going to modify this existing code only. So in the previous code, we had the virtual users as 10 and then we had 20 iteration, but this is the average load test. But in case of stress testing, like we saw, we have, we can pass multiple stages in which first user can ramp up from zero to 200 virtual users within some specific time. It stays there for some time and then again ramp down to zero virtual users. For that, we are going to pass stages array inside it. So in stress testing, we will be verifying multiple stages. So our first stage would be in the first stage pass duration. So for example, we want to reach from zero to 200 virtual users within one minute. And over here, you can pass the users. So what are the target user virtual users? You can pass it like this target and then you can pass the number. For example, let's take it 200. Then the next stage would be where I want the duration to be increased. So from one minute, I want it to be five minutes. And then my target audience would be 200. So in this case, my second stage says the users will be accessing your API from one minute to five minutes. And the number of users would be same. The last 
state would be in which your duration will decrease from five minutes we are going to decrease it let's say to 30 seconds and then your target will also decrease in this case so i'll explain you once more what's happening over here so we have three stages in which the traffic ramp up to 200 users over one minute then it stays there for five minutes and then ramp down to the zero users so i'll quickly explain you about the code also so in this, what we are doing, we are importing HTTP from K6 HTTP, which provides functions for making HTTP requests in your test script. Then we have the options object in which we are passing stages. So the first stage is where you wrap up up to 200 users within one minute, and then you stay there for five minutes and then ramp down to zero users. Then we have our test function or default function, which is the main function that K6 will execute during the test case. In this case, I'm simply making a HTTP GET request to the specified URL, which is test.k6.io. And now let's run the test case. Go to your terminal, enter the command k6 run and your test case name. So over here it is press test.js. So this is going to take time because it will be executed for this total duration, which is six minutes, 30 seconds. So I'm going to pause the video and we'll come back once this is done and it will be executing for 200 virtual users. You can also check here in the logs up to 200 looping virtual users for six minutes, 30 seconds, which is basically this total count, right? So let's wait for this to complete. So now you can see this is completed and in the logs, we can directly check if there is any failure. So we can check the HTTP request failure, which is this one, which is 0%. And then the total HTTP request made during this duration what is the total virtual users? It was around 200. So this is how you can perform stress testing in K6. In the upcoming videos, we will see how we can perform further assertion. For example, if we want to check if API is returning 200 OK or not, and how to make different HTTP call like post call and passing the payload also. We will see all those in the upcoming video. We'll also see how we can perform browser testing using K6. So stay tuned. And if you really like the video, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. And thank you for watching.